I missed that, Angie. <laughs> um, what brings you to the table, to the Rosk table? You, of course. Why not? I was going to say that. <laughs> like, why not? No, but seriously, besides Angie, no, seriously. Um, what brings me to the Ross table, I try to be involved in anything to get anything to do with the community because all our services can serve um, some you know families one way or, or the other so I like what the Ross is doing when it comes to um, um, families or just people in recovery and just trying to uh, bring my brick to the table and then um, sit at whatever table that will have me when it comes to helping with the community all those like Miss Davis jumped on I can go ahead and uh, throw her in there <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead and introduce yourself, Ms. Davis. Hi, I'm Dorothy Davis. I'm from Children's Home and Aid. I'm the Parents Care and Share Coordinator for Mid Central Illinois. Good to see you all. What brings you to the Ross table, Ms. Dorothy? Wow, can I breathe? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what brings me? Uh, because I worked in substance abuse for almost 20 years. Um, I worked at Chestnut. I worked at uh, Broman's uh, substance abuse program. So I have a vested interest in recovery. And I think that some of the things I saw with recovering people, there weren't enough services out there to help sustain their recovery. So um, I'm very excited about a program that's going to bring opportunities for recovering people and their families to help them stay sober. So that's my reasoning in a nutshell. Thank you, Dorothy. And then I think we have Clara, and then we'll turn it over to Dan. Hi, I'm Clara. I'm an intern at the Parents Care and Share, Pro Care and Share Program for Children's Home and Aid in Bloomington. And I have nothing really to report, but I'm glad I get to be a part of this group. Thanks, Clara. Thank you, everybody, for your introductions. I'm going to do a screen share here. So being it's near the end of the year, um, and we know we've been a little presentation heavy lately, so we want to get back soon to some discussions like we had uh, last year about direction to take the ROSC specific um, events, activities that we can put on to benefit our communities, recovering people. But we thought it would also be prudent just to do a recap of what we've accomplished, some of the things that we have done to this point for 2020. Uh, it's not everything we've done over the course of the ROSC, we're just focusing on, on this calendar year uh, before I get any further, does everybody see the PowerPoint in Clayton County Rusk? Okay. Yeah. Cool. So I'm just going to kind of take this sequentially from the uh, beginning of the year in January through where we are uh, today and then through what we have planned for December and then going into early next year. Uh, the first thing we launched January 2nd was our Bridges uh, All Recovery and Family Group. And as some of you know, this is an all-inclusive, unaffiliated meeting. Uh, we get people with lived experience from any recovery program, um, along with the clients that are in treatment over at Chestnut. So we rotate, one week will be the men's unit, next will be the women's unit. They're welcome to invite their family members and supports into that meeting as well. It's not like a typical 12-step meeting where there's readings and then a set topic and um, kind of a structured way to close. It's We're much more free form where the clients and the newcomers themselves drive the discussion. So we encourage them to share at the beginning. Um, they can ask questions, they can uh, cross-talk, they can bring up anything that's really on their mind. And then the people with lived experience just sort of, sort of share. Um, you know, what they did under similar circumstances when they were in treatment, how they handled, you know, going back home after being done with treatment, how they built trust with family members and loved ones, um, how they went about getting a sponsor. And the other cool thing is we, we have a, a good foundation of Al-Anon members, so people working in a family recovery program who are also on the call uh, as people with lived experience to kind of speak to the, the family perspective um, and also relate to the client's family members that are on the call. Uh, this has been um, really a, 
a successful meeting. We're averaging about 20 people every week, and we have a good core of dedicated people that come week in, week out. Uh, we are currently doing it over Zoom. We were we started at the Glen Cover building on January 2nd. We had two people, and then the second week we went up to about 11, and then by the end of the month we were right around you know 15 to 18, and we've grown a little bit. Um, so the Zoom code, if you're interested in that meeting, anybody can attend who touches recovery in, in some way. Um, or if you have people that you know might be able to benefit from it, there's the code down there. Or you can reach out to Angie or I, and um, we'll be happy to give you that information. Also, in early 2020, uh, we launched the first ever smart recovery meeting in McLean County. Uh, self-management and recovery training. Angie, I'm gonna, since you run this meeting, do you mind speaking to this slide? And, and not at all. And um, going back to circling back to what brings me to the Ross, because the Ross project coordinator, not only um, professionally, but personally, I'm in recovery for um, some anxiety and then also substance alcoholism was my, you know, Achilles heel, I should say. And smart recovery is part of my pathway of recovery. And it really spoke to me, but also like a hybrid of smart recovery and AA. So again, the ROSC recognizes multiple pathways to recovery and smart recovery um, being myself being hybrid, really believe that philosophy, but also um, sp speaking to smart, it's a self-management recovery training, as Dan said. Um, currently we have it on Thursday afternoons and it's really open to anything that someone's afflicted by. This could be process addiction, which could be shopping, gaming, which we see a higher prevalence right now when the current landscape, um, gambling, and also eating disorders, things along those lines, any kind of process that you have a maladaptive relationship with. And then also substance use disorder or um, abusing substances in general, alcoholism, alcohol, drugs, the whole nine yards, and mental health afflictions. There could be depression, anxiety, uh, bipolar, things along those lines. And a lot of times there could be co-occurring co disorders going on or you know, uh, basically a combination of one or the above. So it's a very um, conducive setting to anything that anyone could come with. They can come to the table with anything. They could sit, it's very similar to an AA format, meeting format, aside from that it's secular. So there's not a spiritual affiliation, anything along those lines. You can, but it's not based, the meetings are not based on that. They're really seated in cognitive behavioral therapy where you think about something really affects your actions and then your behaviors and your motivations as well. So we're trying, we use tools in the format itself, um, meeting itself. And then we also have um, different videos and open discussion. So if you're interested, or if you know someone that could benefit from a smart recovery, it could be family, friend, allied, the whole nine yards, please give them the Zoom information or have them reach out to myself or Dan. Thank you, Angie. And while you're warmed up, uh, you want to go ahead and take this slide too? Sure do. Um, we also launched in February the LGBTQ support group because we know that addiction and or mental and behavioral health afflictions know no socioeconomic boundaries, race, culture, anything. It can affect anyone at any time. And we're realizing in our community and a lot of communities in general, and that there's so many people suffering in silence and there is a lot of segregation. And so um, with that being said, this community really needs um, a safe space and support group because they are also a population that is prone or can be a target for aggressive acts. That's why we do not have the call-in Zoom information advertised. So if you are interested, if you know someone interested in a support group that does provide that safe space, um, open to anyone that is a, a di identifies with the community of gay, lesbian, um, questioning the whole nine yards transgendered. The whole nine yards, you will not be judged. It's a safe space for anyone to come. It's open format, again, secular, but you could be spiritual. You could uh, align yourself with any kind of spirituality, spiritual path. It's just an open, safe space for people that identify as LGBTQ to come to discuss anything behavioral or mental health that they're afflicted by, especially during this time we need something like that. Thank you. And then also to point out, this is, to, my, to our awareness, the only uh, meeting that caters to LGBTQ plus um, in terms of substance use, mental health. There was 
a 12 step group, um, an AA meeting that, that was, you know, specific for LBT, LGBTQ, uh, that one ended up disassembling about a year ago. So we have this group now in place to um, kind of pick up that slack. Um, we also in, in March, we one of the ideas that came from one of our brainstorming sessions last year when we broke up into small groups and talked about, you know, some events we could get on the calendar was a game night. Uh, we did manage to pull one of those off in March at the Glen Cover building. Um, we had about a dozen people. We had a couple families there, a couple members from the recovery community, Red Raccoon, uh, down you know, downtown donated some games. We had uh, way more games than we needed, but um, unfortunately due to COVID, uh, this has, you know, is on a hiatus. We do hope to bring it back and we're looking for ways, exploring ways that we might be able to, to do something virtually, uh, but we will talk in a little bit about some recreational opportunities that we have been able to, to do over Zoom. Um, so this is something that's kind of on the back burner for now, but we, we did, at least get one completed. Um, moving into, we launched some work groups. Uh, we were calling them subcommittees, work groups, which feels a little bit more accurate description. Uh, there's several of those we'll review here. The behavioral health work group was the first one to launch in March. And Angie, there's uh, two slides here if you wanna take these next two about that group. Yeah, Dan, thank you. And I actually, I will invite anyone that's a part of the behavioral health work group. Um, Taylor's a part of that group. Dorothy's a part of that group. Jeremy's a part of that group. Natasha, Amy Hancock, and help me out. Am I missing anyone? And Murphy, Murphy just joined as well. So we started, well, does anyone want to speak to these slides to the group, Dorothy or Jeremy or anyone? Okay, what we've been doing is we, we again, Examining the landscape, COVID, you know, infiltrated our whole area, our lifestyle, basically, in general, back in March. And so this group really came together in March. And assessing the environment, we decided to focus on some stigma eradication workshop. And actually, a series. And in that series, the first one was intimate partner violence, to where we gathered data, created a PowerPoint, and Jeremy Studebaker recorded a webinar. And as far as I know that that is on the website of McLean County Health Department, Center for Human Services, and it'll be uploaded to our YouTube channel as well. And then we also had a caregiver to child dynamics. And again, looking at the prevalence of everyone going into seclusion and really being socially disconnected, we thought that maybe there would be a higher prevalence of, unfortunately, of child and also partnership um, violence and abuse and things along those lines. And so we really wanted to eradicate stigma surrounding who does it affect? How does it affect people? When are you really gauging like, is this normal? Is this not? Again, we're in a time that we're not able to freely bounce ideas or interact with each other on a normal socialized basis. So these were more to educate people what to look for, how to reach out, when to reach out and who to reach out in McLean County and nationally. So that was the whole end game to our stigma reduction series. And then now we're solidifying the final part of that three part series of relationships and recovery. And so we looked at it from the perspective of people in recovery and their relationships, it can be loved ones, intimate, um, social relationship, professional relationships, and then the inverse of that. So people like friends, family, loved ones, um, partners, spouses in relationships with someone that's in recovery. So we did um, pull out, put out some surveys for people that are either in recovery and or people that have relationships with some recovery to gather data that way. And then now we're pulling together the PowerPoint presentation. We're solidifying at this point, getting some approvals, and then we'll develop that webinar from that series. And we just had a brainstorming session for where are we going now? What's January 2021 look like or the whole new year? So we have some ideas jotted down, but please feel free. If there's anything along the lines of behavioral health, we have self-care on there. We have, you know, barriers to treatment, things on those lines. Um, side note, we will be talking about a racial disparity and inequity workshop that myself, Toy and Lynn Foster are trying to pull together. So, from there, we will be developing some of those. And now I'm starting to ramble a little bit. So if there's any other behavioral health ideas, please reach out to me or Dan or anyone in that group. Excellent, thank you. 
One of the other work groups we launched in April was our sober living work group. And if you recall, these, these groups all stemmed from the idea that we wanted to move initiatives forward that were in our strategic plan, um, but there's only so much we could accomplish each month in an hour, hour and a half council meeting. So we have volunteers from the council, you know, uh, formulate these different groups. So um, some, of the, some of the things we've done in the sober living group is assisted with getting people into sober living, specifically the House of Hope. Um, when we first met with Pastor Eddie Perkins, the house was empty um, in large part to some of the efforts with this group in terms of helping with scholarship, raise scholarship funds and referrals uh, from Chestnut and jail. We did get that house populated pretty quickly and it's full right now. Um, we've, been, we've been having some meetings, kind of ongoing collaboration with YWCA Labyrinth House to learn, you know, basically how they run their program, how they dealt with zoning issues, uh, looking at potential opportunities for new sober living. Uh, we've talked to PATH about how to go about requesting, um, you know, funds for through uh, housing and urban development. Um, we're looking at hopefully doing a fundraiser this spring and the proceeds to that would go to building a, a, you know, a fund where people who are coming out of treatment, coming out of jail and want to move into sober living or, you know, some kind of safe housing, but don't have the funds, we would be able to, through this fundraiser, hopefully help them pay for that first month's rent, that security deposit, whatever they, they might need. Hopefully this will be a partnership with, with YWCA. It's all still in the works. Um, we're looking at possibly a, a virtual 5K, um, but if you're interested in helping out with that or any of these efforts, the, these, these meetings are bi-weekly every, every other Thursday at one o'clock. Um, core members right now are Laura Pacetti, Bill Kinsey, myself, and uh, Toy Beasley. And then we have um, Angie come in when there's certain specialty topics, but uh, it's, it's a group where we could use more, more help in terms of this is some large, large, you know, efforts and it's, you know, kind of long-term, you know, planning. It's, it takes a lot of, uh, we need more help basically with this in terms of um, getting even property owners, people with resources to, you know, increase the capacity in this area for sober living. We're doing what we can, but we recognize this is more of a three to five year strategy for some of the things that we want to accomplish. And we also have our spirituality work group, which started in May. And that's mainly comprised of Toy Beasley, Scott Kemp, Michelle Cope, myself, Angie, uh, Rabbi Rebecca DeBeau, Debbie Reese, and Pastor Eddie Perkins um, has participated here and there. If I'm leaving somebody out, I apologize, but um, we have a good representation of local churches, synagogues, temples, as well as people, you know, work in different recovery programs. And the idea here is just like the Ross promotes multiple paths of recovery, we want to promote multiple paths of spirituality. Um, this group are strong believers that spirituality is a, a foundation of recovery. And therefore, we, we want to do whatever we can to, you know, open people's minds about different spiritual paths. We had a um, really fun and successful spirituality and recovery panel, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, back in September, we want to have uh, kind of a series of panels going forward, hitting different topics. We're working on these, what we're calling Spirituality 101, where we have different uh, leaders from various faith systems speaking to, you know, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, you know, different um, spiritual paths in like, you know, just quick, quick hitter videos, seven, eight minutes, you know, what are the, the basics, what are the, the core beliefs, you know, what's the, what books are studied, you know, where to find, uh, you know, resources in the community. So those are some things that we're gonna be adding to our YouTube channel. This group meets bi-weekly on Friday. We've been on a hiatus a little bit since the panel, but we are picking back up this Friday at 10 a.m. You'll see the Zoom info there. 
And again, uh, there's a wide range of opportunities and possibilities with this type of topic. So we hope to get some more involvement, get some more ideas. We do want to get into some speaker testimonials, um, start a book or reading club on you know different self-help, spirituality-based books. Um, so that's some of the some of the other ideas in the hopper. And then the other formal work group we have right now is our sober recreation group. And this um, started officially in May, but we were having some ad hoc meetings like you know getting the game night started. Um, this group is Bill again, myself, Angie, Tom Brown, and uh, Rachel Remlinger, who works over at the, the Chestnut Health Center. And really our, our mission here is just to bring fun and fellowship, combat boredom. You know, um, this has been probably the most active group in terms of events, especially with COVID and people really struggling with uh, cabin fever and just everything that, that comes with the pandemic. Um, in addition to providing fun, we wanna also give things to people that will, especially in early recovery, that will um, sort of foster new coping skills. So things that have to do with writing, with art, with uh, expression. So in addition to the game nights, we have, uh, we have had some art and painting nights. We've had some open mic nights. Uh, we have some creative writing workshops on tap. Uh, this group meets bi-weekly, Wednesdays at two o'clock. Again, Zoom information below. And here's another one where we'd love to have more people involved, get some more ideas, help with communication and outreach. Uh, there's still a, a ton of possibilities we can do with this group. Really quick, Dan, I'm a, I want to go ahead and plug. I sent earlier today um, a flyer for Poetry Night. Chantel, who's on the call, and Tom Brown, they're leading that on December 10th at 7 p.m. Please reach out to Tom Brown, myself, or Chantel Hunt, again, she's on this call, to register or even to say, hey, I'm interested, and then you'll get the Zoom information that way. They just want to get a head count to be able to organize that full hour structure for the poetry reading. And you can read anything you want, or Chantel, do you want to speak more to it? Yes, give me a second here. Let me get it here. So yes, if you can reach out to either one of us, what we're trying to do, um, it's like a spoken word. We were trying to do a little bit of education of poetry, but it just depends on how many people sign up and they want to uh, speak, um, speak their poetry. So um, we uh, <clears throat> speak, I mean, speak their poetry. So that way we know about timing. So like we don't get a whole bunch of people, we'll try to go into a different type of poetry. But if we get enough people, because some, um, I had from my, um, from hosting portrait nights before it, it can become a huge success so um just get in touch with us and uh, again it's your poetry different types of poetry even if you want to read your favorite poetry um that's also welcome as well and then just while we're on the topic uh, there's been discussion about this going into 2021 being a bi-monthly event where it might even cultivate into or you know have a spin-off creative writing workshops where we're actually um, not only sharing different readings, poetry, but also teaching, you know, basic poetry or creative writing skills and techniques, again, to um, kind of help with those coping mechanisms. So let me go back. Um, so in July, we had our first open mic night. Uh, we had another one in October. We're going to Sort of on the, as we go into next year, this is going to be bi-monthly. So the idea would be the the creative writing or poetry workshops be one month, and next month will be the open mic, and then just kind of trade back and forth. The open mic night um, has had you know involvement with people reading their own poetry or those of uh, people they admire, but it's really more of like a variety show where people can sort of showcase any talent. Uh, People have played a song on the guitar. We've had, um, we have a gentleman who's in the 12, local 12-step 12 community he used to be. He's a uh, aspiring comedian now living in LA. He hopped on in our July open mic and did a, a set of comedy, which was uh, very interesting and entertaining. Uh, it's, so it's really anything. It could be, uh, you know, lyrics, uh, joke, joke telling, magic tricks, I'm, you know, there's really no, as long as it's appropriate, there's really no limit. Uh, we also involved the um, treatment center 
So people in residential recovery, we had the women's unit involved in July, the men's in October, we just make it optional for them. But uh, there's been pretty good involvement, you know, from, from that population as well. We've had clients, you know, read, uh, you know, poems that inspired them while they're in treatment, things that they've, lyrics they've written themselves. Um, so uh, we average about 15 to 20 each time. So it's been a pretty good turnout. And this is currently being done over Zoom. And uh, let's see, what else do we wanna say about that? I think that, that basically covers it. But again, this is open to anybody. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is Angie coordinated with one of our Ross counterparts up in the Chicago area. Uh, he's a member of Kenneth Young Center. And he brought his outpatient group that he does on Thursday nights to um, sort of do a field virtual field trip. And they all attended that, which really bolstered um, you know, the attendance in October, that was great. The other thing is this is when we have this, we have it at six o'clock on Thursday nights. So it's the same Zoom code as the Bridges meeting. So it's kind of a night of recovery where people hopefully come for the open mic night and then stay for the Bridges meeting. It's all in the same session. They don't have to log off and then back on to another Zoom code. So um, we kind of blended it with the Bridges meeting to sort of help uh, support both those initiatives. And then we had a, a cool thing back in September, a virtual artist paint night. And here we had one of Chantel's friends who's an artist, Keisha, lead over Zoom, uh, the creation of a painting basically. If, if anybody's familiar with kind of what Bob Ross does or more appropriately or more, I guess, accurately Merlot in a masterpiece, there's the painting, one of them. Uh, we had the supplies delivered to people who signed up, we signed up through Eventbrite. And uh, myself and Tom went around town delivering paint kits with the paints, the brushes, the canvas. Keisha had already prepped the canvases with the, the sketch of the, the tree there. And people just got on Zoom and, um, you know, followed along step by step. So it was kind of, it was a Friday night. It was a good turnout. And we still have plenty more art supplies to, to do several more of these. So we'll definitely get one of these going again in early 2021. We had um, the Women's Oxford Oxford House appeared um, and people from, uh, was it Mayor's Manor also appeared. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was fun. And we, we've also reached out to Melissa Sorensen who's, who runs uh, Merlot in a masterpiece, and she's expressed interest in, um, you know, kind of being the artist to to walk people through another painting, just so we're not constantly putting the burden on Keisha. And really quick side note to that, Dan, um, these don't cost participants any money. So all the supplies and everything that were dropped off, they were covered by, you know, different stipends within the grant itself. So very important, all these activities that whatever the Ross puts on, it never cost a participant any money. Yep. We use some of our budget money at the end of the fiscal year ending in June to get some of those supplies. So again, we are well stocked for at least two more, I'd say. Um, and then in September, we also had the earlier mentioned panel to celebrate spirituality and recovery. So here we had uh, six panelists. We had locally Scott Kemp, uh, Toy Beasley. We also had uh, Ken, Ken R representing kind of non-religious. Um, so basically we had Christianity, two people representing Christianity, one non-religious, and then we have um, uh, a member representing the, the Judaism faith and Islam. And then we also had somebody from California rep representing Wilbriety, which is a, a Native American recovery movement. And so it was a nice sort of uh, mixture of different perspectives when it comes to spirituality. All of them, you know, sort of emphasizing the crucial role spirituality plays in their recovery, but also speaking to different paths and different beliefs. So again, the real focus here was showing people on, you know, that were involved or who wanna watch the recording that there's not just one way to find a spiritual experience when you're in recovery. Um, 
And we ha also had some of the, the, the Ross coaches in Illinois, some of the people involved kind of at the, the higher level of guiding the, the various Ross efforts in Illinois in attendance, um, Bob Cardi, Mark Saunders, some, and some others. So this has been recorded. We had about 50 people on the call, including one of the, uh, the men's unit at Chestnut. And this will be a part of our YouTube channel that we'll talk about in a little bit here. So uh, this, this was a great success. It was 90 minutes. We hope to do, like I said, uh, some others. So we'd be looking, we're gonna try and keep it probably within the, the purview of the spirituality work group, but we will we'll definitely need future panelists. Um, so that's something if, if you're interested or you know somebody, you know, we want to, um, you know, see, take this as far as we can in terms of, um, you know, sharing the, the value of, of spirituality, not just in recovery, but in, in our lives in general, regardless of what we're dealing with, that idea of connection and um, being able to rely on something bigger than ourselves. Speaking of the YouTube channel, um, we created this back in August. Angelica Adcock's been a huge help to this. She's basically our producer, director, and she's uh, taken time out of her schedule just about every week since October to meet with different people to record content. And not only does she record it, she does an awesome job editing it up, um, you know, putting um, different, uh, I guess, words and images, you know, for example. So uh, one of the ones we did was history of recovery you know, in the West, and there was reference to, you know, various people from Bill W to, uh, you know, uh, Frank Buchman and Sam Shoemaker, all these kind of obscure names for most people that were involved in creating the Oxford group, which then sort of led to AA, and she did the research to, um, you know, find those pictures of those people and, and get them on the screen at appropriate times, so she's, she's doing a bang-up job. Uh, Angie and I have recorded kind of a sort of little roundtable intro to what the ROSC is. We want to do some more videos kind of explaining its purpose. Um, we've had uh, the spirituality panel. Our last three council meetings have also been recorded. We're recording right now, just so everybody's aware. Um, we've had our history of recovery sort of um, sequence of, of recordings. We've had some on breaking down the steps, trying to demystify the 12 steps, the meanings of the different recovery symbols like the circle and the triangle for AA and the, the NA diamond, um, smart recovery. Uh, we've had some personal stories. Murphy's been involved in sharing his story. He's also recorded a video on the role of spirituality in his recovery. So this is again, the YouTube channel we're really excited about, and this is where everybody, anybody can get involved. There's really no limit to the topics that we can cover here. I mean, somebody just wants to, you know, record five minutes of them talking about willingness or honesty or open-mindedness or acceptance. You know, that's something that we'd, we'd love to get from, from anyone. Um, so you can contact Angie, myself, or Angelica if you're interested in participating or you have ideas. Uh, we do have some some Ross members who have agreed, Michelle and Sally, to speaking about uh, testifying to the role that the Ross plays in the community, some of the benefits, and where they you know see it potentially going. So we'd be looking for help from everybody on the call if they'd be interested in, in doing something like that as well. We're officially launching it in January, and we'll have weekly content that's going to be uploaded. So right now, what we're doing is creating enough videos so we've got a, a nice queue that where there's no you know there's no sort of gaps we want to make sure there's new information new content out there every week and angelica angie anything else that i'm missing that you want to mention on this um i just want to say like the youtube channel is just really important to me because i think that representation and all sorts is really important so i want to make sure like YouTube is like one of the biggest search engines. So I want to be, or I want to be a part of like making sure that there's content out there and available for people that are struggling with substance abuse or mental health and kind of need someone to relate to. And um, speaking of representation, while I love um, Dan and Murphy so much, 
um, we just, they're like both white men. So it'd be really cool to have people of like different groups and communities on the channel, just so we can make sure we're relating to more people. So if you're interested in literally filming anything or like being a part of the YouTube channel, please contact us. Perfect addition. Thank you. And if you're interested in January, when that becomes public, it'll be under just McLean County Rosk. It should pop right up. We already talked about the, the writing workshops, so I'm just going to skip over this one. This is what Chantel and Angie were, were speaking to earlier. And then next month, what we'd like to do is have a virtual holiday party. So we've been looking at things that we might be able to, to do for Thanksgiving, for the uh, Christmas season. And, um, you know, we looked at possibly getting some turkeys from um, Rop Farms. They're, you know, they're organic, never frozen. And, you know, basically, originally we we're thinking maybe just take it from the Ross budget to deliver to local recovery homes and some families that might be in need, but we're, we're not able to do that because um, we can't use the grant money to buy food. So uh, the idea that we've had possibly is the idea of sponsoring. Somebody sponsors a recovery home and, and buys a turkey, whether it be for Thanksgiving or for, for the holiday, Christmas holiday season. And it's about $30 for a 15 pound bird. And um, you know we're, 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 we have some meetings later in the week to talk more about this, but I wanna at least kind of plant the seed that if that's something you might be interested or your organization, somebody you know, um, you know, we, we'd like to find a way to, you know, get some of these, so help some of these local recovery homes and families that um, either maybe not be able to afford it or give them the opportunity, like with the case of maybe an Oxford home or House of Hope or Labyrinth, just the opportunity to prepare it together and kind of have that familial sort of vibe going, you know, that comes with, you know, making a turkey on Thanksgiving or Christmas. Um, but this other event that would be separate from that is kind of focusing on the principle of the idea of gratitude. So we've all had a, you know, a very different, you know, in many ways challenging year. And we thought it was important to, well, let's, you know, kind of look, turn the table a little bit and look at what we actually have to be thankful for. And um, this tentatively would be about a 90 minute Zoom party where we'd start with uh, what we call a gratitude meeting. And again, this is not just for people in recovery. People in recovery, of course, will be a, a big part of that invited, but this would be open to everybody on the Ross Council, anybody who just, you know, just wants to participate, you know, whether you are involved in recovery or work in the field or not. And a, recover, a gratitude meeting is basically everybody takes a minute or two just to say what they're grateful for, you know, and then just sort of pass it on. Um, and then the second part of the meeting, we would have like a speaker lead, somebody from the local community just um, speaking on the role gratitude's played in their recovery or in their life and, um, you know, incorporate some seminal moments, you know, in their journey and, and how gratitude played a part with that. So um, again, we want to give people a, a chance to sort of, especially those who, who struggle with the holidays, you know, this might be something that they can look forward to and just, you know, take part in some fun fellowship. And um, we're thinking maybe some kind of food item where obviously we couldn't share it together, but if people prepare it themselves, whether it be cake or ice cream, spaghetti, something kind of simple, you know, and that would be like the, the meal of choice or, or dessert of choice. So just uh, something to add a little twist to it. So more on this, um, if this is something you're interested in helping to plan, then please let Angie or I know. Angie, it looks like you're gonna, did you have your hand up there? No, okay. <laughs> I thought I saw your hand go up. I think maybe you're just going like that. So uh, this will be probably mid, late December, ideally, and we'll need everybody's help getting the word out and just sort of, you know, communicating the awareness of the event. Um, and on the horizon, so some things we have planned coming up. We've talked about the, the YouTube channel and, you know, what we want to do with that going into next year. Uh, we've talked about the fundraiser. 
Um, another thing we wanna just keep at the forefront of everybody's mind is the idea of the ROSC evolving into an RCO recovery community organization. That's not necessarily gonna happen in 2021, but that is the end goal for the ROSC, you know, sort of the, the five-year strategic plan for the recovery community itself to organize and be able to sustain and support the ROSC without Chestnut as a lead agency. And we hope to bring in a guest speaker um, to one of our council meetings early next year to sort of talk more about what an RCO is, how to formulate it, you know, some, some strategies and techniques to, to bring it about. Uh, we also have a racial equality workshop. Angie, I'm gonna give you the, the chance to speak to that if you don't mind. Sure, thank you. Um, wanted to know, let everyone know that we're not letting that discussion We've been talking about that since the summer and we need to turn that discussion into action. And I know a couple of people have vo vocally said that they would be interested in help kickstarting this um, back in even in August. So we had the spirituality panel, we had a lot of energy there. So um, Toy Beasley and I have been spearheading, trying to coordinate um, some people to come together. Linda Foster is one of them, Marlon Chamberlain, and I know Dorothy Davis have expressed interest in looking at some kind of racial equity workshop, educational, and we're going to tie it into substance use and behavioral mental health. How we're going to do that and what we're exactly going to put out for awareness and education, we all are going to meet and discuss. And I will give the floor over to Linda, Marlon, or Dorothy if they'd like to speak to this. I know this is the uh, beginning uh, steps of it. And so I'm excited about what, what we can bring to the table. I mean, it's wide open. Yeah. Uh, and if anybody else like to participate, uh, by all means, do that or submit uh, any ideas that you may have. Um, this this is a great opportunity, especially for our community, to wrap around uh, uh, these topics. And so, you know, I'm looking forward to to being a part and uh, contributing to whatever uh, I can in making this a success. Thank you, Linda, and I mirror that sentiment exactly. I'm very excited. It's fertile soil for some excitement, some passion, and let's, you know, let's spread that energy. Let's get some awareness and education out there. Anyone else, Dorothy, Marlin, you want to say anything? I just want to say I'm excited about the opportunity to do something with it. Um, in this community. I think it'll be good. I think it's an awesome team you got with Linda and Toy and Marlon. So I'm excited to work with you in whatever capacity I can to help spread this word and get information out to people and educate. Excellent. So that's that'll be a, a big thing to, to work on going into next year. And um, next month, Kind of the last bullet there is if it'll either be December or January, we'd like to kind of go back to one of the council meetings, uh, just doing like virtual breakouts through Zoom and uh, talking about what else we want to do with the Ross for the, for the next year or two. Um, we think it's, it's been a while since we've done something like that. So we think it's good to, we have some, some new people involved with the council, get some fresh ideas. And, you know, it could just be simple one-off events, could be, you know, larger um, sort of uh, culturally rooted um, objectives, like with the racial equality workshop, just, you know, we, we just want to kind of go back to the drawing board, keep the momentum with, with what we have done, but also get some new ideas flowing. So uh, that would be something if you can kind of think about in the meantime of what ideas you might want to bring to the table, that would be very much appreciated and beneficial. And with that, that's everything that we had in terms of the recap. We've got a couple of minutes left. Any comments or questions about anything that was talked about? I do wanna say one thing before I turn the floor over for open discussion. I wanna say, um, I really have a lot of gratitude for everyone that comes to the table to discuss. These are very emotionally charged, very layered um, situations that are, are not only our economy faces, but basically our communities. 
anywhere you are in Illinois, any state you are, there are so there's so much strife going on, especially now, but in general. But these situations that we're trying to approach and change, bring awareness to substance use disorder, behavior, mental health, racial inequalities. It's very emotionally charged. And thank you for everyone coming to the table to be brave enough to take this charge and to bring it back to your community. So I know everyone has so much passion here. And I just want to say, especially in the theme of Thanksgiving being next week, I really appreciate all of you. And thank you so much. And have a great holiday with your family and friends, however you can spend it with them. Well, that just sounded like a perfect way to close. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments or questions or should we call it a day for our November meeting? And I'll just uh, echo what I said in the, the chat, just kudos to everything you all have going on. This is so impressive and I'm excited to be here, be a part of it and learn from all of you and, and help spread the word. So great job, everyone. And I just wanted to say thank you to Angie and Dan for just the great leadership. You guys provide the energy, the, the guidance and um, just the follow through. It, it's a great uh, committee to work on. Thanks, Michelle. We're very happy to have you and Rachel, we're glad you're on board as well. I just wanted to say that I was here from the very beginning, which was very exciting to watch everything on paper and on whiteboard, but you guys have brought it into fruition. It's exciting to be a part of something that's gonna help the recovery community and the community in general. Look at all the work that we've accomplished in such little time, it's amazing. Um, constantly moving forward. You got, and Dan and Angie, y'all are amazing. You guys work together and you lead and you direct and you empower everyone in the community to be a part. And that's awesome. So thank you for that. I really appreciate all your hard work. Oh, thank you. Uh, make you're gonna make me get all misty. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were on a call before this with some of the other ROSC um, some of the people that lead the different ROSCs in Illinois and the, the coaches. And one of the questions was, you know, if you had to say right now, is your ROSC successful? And there was some dialogue about, you know, whether people thought it was 100% successful, whether they really were struggling and needed help. And, you know, we'd say we're, we're definitely on the side of feeling it's successful, but this is kind of more of a progress over perfection thing. And, um, you know, when it comes to, actually evolving the, the ROSC into an RCO. We still have a ways to go there, you know, but uh, we are very proud of what we've been able to do so far, but um, there's the sky's kind of the limit with this. So we recognize there's still so much more that, that can be done. So thank you for that feedback, but you know, it's something we're, we're constantly striving to do better with, but we need your help. Yeah, we couldn't do this without any of you coming to the table and each and every one of you that come to the table, we appreciate, like I've already, I know I've said that many times, um, but you really, I really need to convey that you really do mean a lot to me, the coalition, the whole nine yards. And um, if you think of any ideas or any directions or like, hey, what about this? You know what? Send an email to me, bounce it off. You know, I know we hit you with a lot of things today. If anything comes to you, you know, it's always an open door, please, anytime. Jones probably received emails from me at like 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> the whole nine yards. <laughs> so yeah, please feel free. It's always an open door. And again, thank you for everyone. And next month, and then January, we'll be on, um, we'll be sharing the YouTube channel itself, unveiling it, so to speak, at that council meeting and some other things that are on the horizon. All right, everybody have a great night. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. We'll see you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.